Forgotten 80s Action Figure Playsets, Part 3. So, stick around. dorks and dorkettes and welcome to nostalgia syndrome my name is rob and in this episode we're going to talk about more forgotten action figure play sets from the 1980s this is the third installment of this little mini series and so far we have a fourth one coming up but with the amount of play sets that came out in the 80s i'm sure that there's more that who knows how many episodes we could take this to that was the wonderful thing about the 80s they didn't have to test the waters with toy lines like they do nowadays. You made a toy line, you made vehicles for it, and you made, you know, play sets for it. It kind of all went hand in hand. Some of them, you know, the play sets came a little bit later and their other waves, but a lot of them just hit the ground running, and you have to respect that. I mean, of course, a lot of them flopped, unfortunately, but, you know, those are the ones that end up being forgotten. For every forgotten one we've talked about, there is one that's up on a pedestal and well-remembered. I mean, everything from G.I. Joe to Masters of the Universe has had multiple play sets, and they've all been successful, and they're all fondly remembered. But maybe we'll get to those one day, too, just of awesome play sets. But until that day, we're talking about the forgotten ones. And without further ado, let's kick things off with number one. And that is the Armored Battle Station from Star Ears. Made by Tomy in 1984, this playset is much more than a playset. I mean, first thing, as soon as you look at this thing, you get a big honking robotic cobra to go with it. Now tell me that wouldn't be cool to add to your G.I. Joe collection, kind of customize it, make it a cobra vehicle. But anyway, they said this was a battering ram on the box, but... To be honest, this is just another awesome creature in the Star Ears line. Speaking of creatures in the line, this also came with a little car named Stinger, which was a scorpion-inspired car. Awesome. I've talked about it before in my vehicles inspired by animals. Anyway, I know I've talked about this awesome little car in the past, and... It was just the icing on the cake for this awesome playset. The inside of the playset, you had a giant robotic arm, a little spinning pedestal that you could put the Star Ears, various computer banks and technology for them to work on, hidden doors and such. It was a really awesome playset, one that I wish I would have had. I mean, I was lucky enough to have a couple Star Ears figures when they came out, but to have this thing would have been awesome. Number two on the list is the Kung Fu Training Center. This generic playset was made by Zima in 1986 and took heavy inspiration from the Remco Karate Kid line. This playset came with a figure that was molded after the Masters of the Universe line. And believe me, it is beautiful in how awesome of a knockoff it is. But anyway, this playset came with breakaway brick walls, Breakaway wooden planks, um, a chair that could be broken, uh, awesome cardboard backdrop of ninjas and kung fu people fighting. But what was really neat about this is it came with a thing that you could put around your figure's waist and pose them that looks like they're doing like a flying kick and it slides on a little track and you can bust through a door that's at the end of the playset. I mean, that's just a neat little feature that it had that could work with hundreds of different action figures. I mean, anything from, like I said, the Remco Karate Kid line to Masters of the Universe figures. I don't think toys with a smaller waist like G.I. Joe would fit in it, but definitely Thundercats or Silverhawks might. Could be pretty cool. But there's just something so awesome about generic toys. I mean... We don't really have that nowadays. I mean, we have dollar store toys, but nothing that would 
garner a playset or vehicles or anything like that. So points to Zima for making this. Number three on the list is Vulcan Rock for the Power Lords toy line released by Ravel in 1983. This large black mountain volcano was topped with molten lava coming out of the top. How great is that? But that didn't match the craziness that was actually on the inside of this playset. I mean, not to be outdone and to fit the weird aesthetic of the toy line, even the ladders were weird. I mean, they weren't normal. They had to have weird... yeah. Of course, the characters could climb up them, which is what they're made for, but they just added to the whole futuristic, weird world of the Power Lords. I know I'm going on and on and on about ladders. What else does this playset have? Let me tell you. Instead of me telling you, let's let the print ad from 1983 do the talking. Vulcan Rock is where the warring factions of Power Lords fight for control. It is a mountainous terrain that is splits apart to reveal a maze of hidden passageways, computer panels, landing areas, escape routes, and concealed openings. In its high-tech, compartmentalized interior, a child and his Power Lords will discover a mysterious elevator that will lift them in and out of Vulcan Rock. A trap door that can open and swallow up the unfortunate Power Lord, and a bridge that will take Power Lords from one side of Vulcan Rock to the other, as the rock is captured and recaptured. From the top of the volcano's opening lid of lava to the bottom of its unknown depths, Vulcan Rock's play value is limited only by a child's imagination. I'll tell you what, that's some fine writing. I'm surprised that the toy line didn't really go anywhere because you could just tell by reading that that they really tried. I mean, they really they really had something, but it just never took hold. I mean, maybe Power Lords needed a cartoon. I mean, they had comics, but that's nothing as the power of a cartoon. I mean, 83, maybe that was too soon because we hadn't seen the popularity of like G.I. Joe and Transformers and Thundercats yet by then. But anyway, like all great play sets of the 80s, it had an elevator, a trap door, it has hidden lasers on the inside. I mean, this was just a really awesome play set and a really awesome toy line. Again, it was a toy line that I did not have any of the figures from. I knew some kids that did and I loved playing with theirs. I mean, they were it's just a creepy toy line, and that's awesome. I mean, just the aesthetic of how people flip around, and yeah, very cool. But anyway, on to number four. And number four is Pee-wee's Playhouse from Pee-wee's Playhouse, made by Matchbox in 1988. This fold-up playset is a pretty great recreation of the Playhouse from the TV show. You have everything from the talking window, the talking floor, his little breakfast nook. It came with his scooter. I mean, this thing was awesome. Unfortunately, it's so ingrained to the show that it doesn't really have any cross-play compatibility. I mean, it does. I mean, He-Man could visit or Cobra Commander could stop by and say the secret word and everyone could scream in his face and he gets angry and starts shooting up the place. But anyway, this had some really neat things. I mean, even the dancing flowers from the show. I mean, they did a great job in making this look like the actual playhouse. So, big props for that. And I'm adding it to the list because I didn't even know this existed. I remember the toys fondly, but I don't remember this actually coming out. And if it did, it never hit my area. And now I can't get the vision of Cobra Commander being freaked out and shooting up the place. Anyway, number five on the list is the Crystal Castle from the Crystar line. Made by Remco in 1982, the Crystal Castle is a thing of beauty. This thing was made with translucent blue plastic and it, oh, it looks great. This is one that had a ton of features. And 
again, let me read from the actual back of the package to I can get all these right because there's a ton of them. And here we go. Starts off by saying it's the ultimate fantasy fortress. You get three play levels. A soaring 21 and a half inch height. Big 14 by 16 inch play area. Drawbridge that lowers. Window that opens. Jail door that closes. A rock chute with four rocks. A recrystallizing chamber. Weapons rack. Four weapons and shield. Crossbow mounted on tripod. Hoist with rope and hook. Four section scaling ladder. Prisma crystal altar. Free prisma crystal. Two battlement walls. Crystal emblem flag. And decorative labels. Again, they put a lot of care and attention into this toy. I mean, Remco, I'm a fan of them, and I will be forever. They were always the toy that was a little bit cheaper at Kmart that I got more often than any of the name brand stuff. But anyway, this again is a toy line that I'm surprised didn't get more attention and become more popular. The toy line was actually created by Marvel. I mean, the comic kind of came first, and then the toys came after. I mean, it was kind of a conjoined effort that they both were released around the same time. And Marvel tried to create this whole new world. And I have the whole comic collection, and it's awesome. They did such a great job. And Remco did such a great job. And it's unfortunate that this toy line didn't go anywhere. Because it was really neat. I mean, the whole translucent plastic of the figures of this castle and the molten bad guys and had their textures and their colors. I mean, just awesome. Awesome, awesome toy line. So sad that it never got anywhere. But anyway, this was just a quick list of five forgotten action figure play sets from the 1980s. This has been the third installment, and like I said, I have a fourth one coming out, possibly a fifth that I just need to do a little bit more research on. But like I said, there's no shortage of awesome 80s playsets, so I just gotta find them. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you got something to say, please leave a comment. I love reading them, and I love getting back to everybody. And if you're new around here and you enjoyed this or any of the episodes that YouTube is recommending down below, please hit subscribe. And if you hit that little bell icon, you'll be notified whenever there's a new episode. So anyway, until next time, thanks for watching. Keep being rad and stay dorky.